The question for today is, how do we emulate machines that we don't have or that don't yet exist? Emulation is one of the dark arts of computer science. Science! You can think of emulation as machines pretending to be other machines. I remember one lecture from the computer systems and architecture class at university. I also remember that the professor gave me a special chair to sit in. I will translate from the original Latin for you. A reading from the book of emulation. The emulator is a tool one must wield wisely. But beware, for it is a trickster that wears a mask. We can configure a Jetson AGX Orin developer kit to emulate all of the other Jetson Orin modules. These modules include the 64GB and the 32GB AGX Orin, the Orin NX in 16 and 8GB models, and the 8GB and 4GB Orin Nano modules. Here is a quick overview of the flashing and setup process. This is a three-step process. Step one, prepare the host computer. We download the Jetson Linux driver and sample root file system. Then we assemble a package to flash to the Jetson. The second step is to flash the Jetson. The final step is to set up the Jetson. We configure Tegra for Linux, and then we install Jetpack. To start with, we prepare our host to flash the Jetson. The host must be an x86 PC running Ubuntu 18.04 or 20.04. Let's download the latest Jetson release packages. I will leave links and commands used in the article linked in the description below. We need to download the driver package, the BSP. Let's save the BSP to a new folder. Then download the sample root file system. Now we are ready to go back and assemble our root FS. Before we do that, we need to set some environment variables. Let's open up a terminal. We will set the environment variables in the .bashrc file. Now we set up the environment variables, l4t underscore release underscore package. Set that to the path of the BSP file sample underscore fs underscore package. Set that to the path of the sample root file system we downloaded. Then we set the board to the Orin dev kit. Then we save the file and close the window. Then we source the bash rc file for the changes to take effect. We can echo our environment variables to see if they took hold. Now we are ready to assemble the root fs. We extract the BSP, switch over to the root FS directory. The next instruction isn't quite right. Let's fix it. Password. We extract the sample root FS. Now let's finish putting everything together. Apply binaries. Now let's install the Orin Nano overlay. We need to wander back to the download links. I should have gotten them when the getting was good. While we are here, we might as well grab the Jetson Xavier NXQ Spy. Now to install the overlay. Installation complete. It's time to put the Jetson into forced recovery mode. The flashing port is located next to the 40-pin GPIO header. The port is USB-C. You will need a data-capable USB-C cable. You'll be plugging the other side of the cable into the host machine. Plug in the USB-C cable. Plug the other end of the cable into your host machine. On the adjacent side of the dev kit, there are three buttons. We have connected the display, the mouse, the keyboard, and the ethernet cable. The forced recovery button is the button in the middle. Here is one way to put the Jetson into forced recovery mode. Starting with the Jetson unplugged from the power supply, press the forced recovery button, and then connect the Jetson to power. Then release the forced recovery button. Here is another way to go into forced recovery mode. 
start with the power connected and the Jetson turned off. Press and hold down the force recovery button. Press and release the power button and then release the force recovery button. Start with the power connected and the Jetson turned off. Press and hold the force recovery button. Press and release the power button. Then release the force recovery button. You are now in force recovery mode and ready to flash. Let's sing the song. LS USB. We want to make sure that we can see the Jetson in force recovery mode. Here it is. Now we are ready to flash. Let's see. Let's emulate a Jetson Orin Nano 8 GB. Password. Flashing complete. The Jetson is booting up. Let's switch over there. Now we are on to the familiar system configuration. I accept my fate. Let's speed up through the rest of the configuration. We'll open up a terminal. Let's do an update. And now we are ready to install Jetpack. Installation complete. Let's reboot. Be right back. Let's run Jetson Utilities from the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub. We will see which type of tiger we have by the tail. We have an NVIDIA Jetson AGX Orin masquerading as a Nano 8GB. L4T 35.1.0, Jetpack 5.0.2. Let's open up a system monitor. It shows that we have eight gigabytes of RAM and we have six CPU cores. Now we run the Jetson Power GUI. GUI, GUI, yummy, yummy. Now we can see which CPU cores are online, their clock speeds, and the GPU clock speed. Let's run a VPI benchmarking sample. Hmm, CMake's not found. Let's install it. Let's run the CMake command again. Now let's build the benchmark application with make. Let's run our benchmark. We will run it for the CPU first. When we compare this number with the NVIDIA technical blog article, we're about 100 milliseconds off. And that's on me because I did not run the script that runs the clocks at maximum. Let's run the CUDA version. That's pretty close. And finally, let's run the PVA version. The Aura Nano does not have a PVA, so it simulates it. It takes a long time to run. Let's set up the Orin Dev Kit to emulate a Orin NX 16 gigabyte. I have placed the Dev Kit into force recovery mode. Let us sing the song, LS USB. There it is. The flash command in the developer article isn't quite right. Let's look at the available configurations. There's the one we want. Let's grab that. And off we go. I'll let this run and configure the Jetson. Be right back. The Jetson's all set up. I ran the Jetson utilities and the power monitor. Let's bring up the system monitor. We have eight cores, 14 gigabytes of memory. It sounds about right. We can see all the clock speeds in the power manager. Let me compile our benchmarks and then we can run them. We can see it's quite a bit faster than the Orin Nano. The PVA result is quite a bit faster. They're supporting hardware underneath. I did not run the clock script, so it doesn't quite match the article. Let's finish up by flashing the Jetson as a AGX developer kit. Okay, it's all set up. Let's set the power mode to max. All the cores, all the time. Let's reboot. We run our benchmarks. 
Let's run Jetson Clocks. We run the benchmarks, and we can now see that it matches the developer article. Thanks for watching.